What's good, y'all? It's the Dumashek React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family without further ado. Let's get into the video. There has been a black presence in Poland since at least the 1700s, as documented through Polish art. Take, for example, this painting by Josef Brandt, which shows the Polish king Jan III Sobieski I've and his wife Mariszenka leaving the palace. I've seen this before. Yo, he did that art. He killed that. And I love art off the back, so this is fire. I like that. Especially how he got that gold slapping. Mm hmm. That's so far. I don't know how I saw it, but I saw this before. You did? Really? Yeah, yes. Uh-huh. Let's add Villanov in the 17th History century. Books? In the foreground, we see two dark-skinned footmen of African origin. The 1884 painting by Anna Blinska Bogdanovich called A Negress depicts an unidentified black model. The 1879 painting by Edgar Degas, Miss Lala at the Cirque Fernando, depicts the Afro-Polish acrobat Anna Olga Albertina Brown, known as Miss Lala. She was born in the town of Szczecin in northwestern Poland and was famous for hanging from great heights by her teeth. One of the most remarkable Afro-Polish historical figures is Władysław Franciszek Jablonowski, the first oh God, general in Poland of African descent. He was born in Gdańsk in 1769 to the aristocrat Maria de Alir and an African footman and was raised by Maria's husband, Konstanty Jablonowski, in Polish aristocracy. Jablonowski joined the French Military Academy in 1783, where he trained alongside Napoleon Bonaparte. Upon graduating in 1876, Jablonowski became a lieutenant in the French army, aged just 17. He was made both the General of Brigade of the Polish Legions and of the Danube Legion. The Polish national hero, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, also has ties to Polish black history. He is renowned in Poland, Lithuania and Belarus for fighting against the Russian and Prussian empires. And he's known in the United States for fighting on the side of the Americans in the American Revolutionary War. Kosciuszko had two black aides-de-camp of whom he was very fond. The first was an African-American man named Agrippa Hull, nicknamed Grippy. The second was a man named Jean Lapierre, nicknamed Domingo, with whom he fought in the Kosciuszko Uprising of 1794. It is well known that Tadeusz Kosciuszko was a close friend of Thomas Jefferson, who served as the third president of the United States. In a will he wrote in 1798, Kosciuszko requested that his US assets be put towards freeing and educating enslaved African Americans. Sadly, due to legal complications, the money was never put to the use Kosciuszko had intended. Did you know that there is a Polish town in Haiti called Kazal? As mentioned earlier, in 1802, Napoleon Bonaparte sent a Polish legion of 5,200 men to Haiti to help the French suppress the Haitian Revolution. This revolution, led by Toussaint Louverture, saw Haitians rise up against slavery and French colonial rule. One of the Polish legionnaires to fight against the Haitians was the aforementioned Afro-Polish general Władysław Franciszek Jablonowski. However, he and most of the Polish legion in Haiti died of yellow fever. The 400 remaining Polish soldiers defected and joined the Haitians in fighting for their freedom. The Haitian Revolution was successful and in 1804, Haiti became the first country in the Western Hemisphere to abolish slavery. Although Toussaint Louverture died before the revolution ended, his successor, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, recognized the contribution of the Polish soldiers and granted them full Haitian citizenship. The Polish soldiers formed a settlement in Haiti known as Kazal, which exists to this day. Let's fast forward now to the early 20th century when African soldiers fought for Poland in the Polish-Soviet War. The best known examples are Samson D and August Brown. Okay. I didn't realize Poland had such a history like this. Of course, we're everywhere. I understand that, but when I think of Poland, I don't, I don't think of us. You know. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Um, yeah, history is deep, man. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be deep and very much so intertwined. That's it's, it's a lot to take in too. Yeah, y'all gonna have to tell us some more interesting things. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. 
Sam Sondi was born in Cameroon in 1885 right, and came foot, to Europe to fight for the French during the First World War. He was detained in a German prisoner of war camp and was subsequently freed by Polish forces. Wow. Sam joined the Polish and fought for independence in the Polish-Soviet War. After the war, Sam worked as a taxi driver in Warsaw before joining the circus and achieving fame as a wrestler. He died in 1937, and in 2018, his descendants held a memorial service in his honour. Perhaps one of the most famous Afro-Polish figures in modern history is the soldier and musician August Agbala Brown. August was born in Lagos, Nigeria in 1895, and later migrated to the UK. He joined a travelling theatre troupe which brought him to Poland in 1922, where he settled, married twice and started a family. August fought in both the invasion of Poland in 1939 and the Warsaw Uprising of 1944. From 1949 onwards, August worked in the Warsaw Department of Culture and Art. In the final two decades of his life, he relocated to London before passing away in 1976. In 2019, a stone monument was unveiled in Warsaw in his honour. So, what is life like for the African diaspora in Poland today? Although the community is growing, there is still a long way to go in the fight for equality and representation. During the Black Lives Matter protests in June 2020, one of the most Earth. circulated images in the Polish media was of a girl named Bianca Nwalisa holding a sign which said, Stop calling me Morzin. Morzin is a Polish word sometimes used to refer to black people. There is a fierce debate in Poland as to whether the term is deemed neutral or offensive. Many black Polish people prefer the term czarny or Afropolacy, which do not have the same negative connotations. One well-known use of the word in Polish literature is the 1924 poem Murszynek Bambo by the poet Julian Tuwim about a little boy of African origin. In 2020, a social media campaign was launched by a group of Afro-Polish activists called Hashtag Don't Call Me Murzyn, in which they condemned the use of the term. The five Cancel activists, Marta Udo, Sara Alexandra, Noemi Undoloka Umbezi, Alexandra Dengo and Ogi Ugono, are part of a collective called Black is Polish, which provides information in both English and Polish on issues related to racism and identity, particularly from the perspective of Black Polish. Polish women. The women petitioned to amend the definition of the word in the Polish dictionary to acknowledge the derogatory connotations. They appeared in a YouTube video in which they discussed the harmful implications of the word Morzin. To date, the video has garnered over 77,000 views on YouTube. In March 2021, the Polish Language Council officially voted that the term Morzin had evolved to become a pejorative term and should not be used in a modern public context other than in historical quotations. Yes. In spite of this, the aforementioned poem Morzinek Bambo continues to be taught in schools. Now let's circle back to the image of the girl at the BLM march, Bianca Nualisa. She, in fact, comes from a family of anti-racism activists. In 2014, her parents, Arinze and Lydia Nwalisa, founded the initiative The Porter Foundation, a platform aimed at challenging racism in Polish society. They offer anti-discrimination workshops in schools, as well as diversity and inclusion training for corporate businesses. The family has appeared on TV several times, and Bianca Nwalisa even appeared on the cover of Polish Vogue. Other organisations that advocate for the Afro-Polish community include the Centre for Monitoring Racist and Xenophobic Behaviour, a non-profit organisation that works to provide legal assistance to victims of racially motivated hate crimes. Another is Africa.org, which, since 2007, has provided a source of information in the Polish language on Africa and the African diaspora. Bruh. Now, before we wrap up this video, I don't know. Okay. It's a lot going on out here in Poland. Yeah. Okay. So, huh. first of all, glad to see that Poland. Everybody was a part of the Black Lives Matter Man, movement across the world. Mm, you know. Yeah, but I'm glad to see that, and I'm glad to see that you know they address their issues there as well. Um, just like you know the word that. That we don't like the N word. Here. Nah, facts, yeah. Um, I didn't know nothing about that word, so that was good education for us 
you know, let us know some of the things, some of the initiatives, things that y'all have been able to turn over recently. We would love to look up some of these things. Yeah, that word alone, I just want to get more into it, not to, I, I just want to have a better understanding on how was it used. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you can hear it, you, somebody call you a word, but it's the history behind it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Why they use that term for what it used for. Because what I was, it's like, you still hear it in the music. You sit here, oh, but then we change it to well, we, not we. But we they take it and it. we keep it for ourselves, where we can represent. Nobody else can call it. Call exactly. Us um, yeah. But yeah, for, for you guys. And then another thing, I really, I really, <laughs> <laughs> another thing I really enjoy is to see is the ladies who did a movement and made a change with that movement. Yeah, yeah. Although that Instagram. was big, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Let people see that you can actually make a change if you stick together and do something long enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna have to go check out that that page. You know, they put the issues there, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, read a little deep into it. Let's take a quick moment to celebrate some contemporary Afro-Polish people who have achieved amazing things. They include the football player Viktor Baginski, MMA fighter and professional boxer Izu Ugono, his sister Osi Ugono, who was the winner of season four of Poland's Top Model, Krystia Ligerski, the LGBTQ plus activist and politician, and the entertainer Aleksandra Sved. And that's all, folks. If you like that, then check out the other videos on our channel. Like, right, y'all, make sure y'all go check her channel out. I feel like she got a lot of good information. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That she was offering she and um, letting people have a deep insight on from all social media platforms all the way down to the history yeah. of Poland, the mm -hmm. unification that they, they was creating, how they was really, you know, mm -hmm. having each other's back. I yeah. thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, so we'd definitely love to look more into yeah, yeah. the black community in Poland. All right. So we hope you guys enjoy this video with us. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.